Hey, it's Mazzy. This is a day trip. Day tripping in my home, Seattle. Seattle, Washington here. Great music town. Great record store town. Great place to see live music. My adopted city, Seattle. And it's even more fun when you have uh, people from out of town that you can kind of drive around. And it's kind of like being an Uber driver without getting paid for it. And that's what it was like yesterday. Four big-ass adults crammed into a Volkswagen GTI. You know, but it worked, it worked. So we went to uh, five record stores in the northern side of the city. I usually uh, stick around the south side and uh, go to Easy Street in West Seattle and to Silver Platters in Soto, but we went north because um, one of our guests is Craig, the record vinyl turntable, channel vinyl turntable. There'll be links below to everyone here. Uh, three out of four, well, including myself, two out of four actually have channels. And then there was uh, my good buddy, Harry, uh, from down near Tacoma in Puyallup. That's a mouthful, Puyallup, Native American uh, names of the, these townships up here. And he comes up regularly. I met him when we sold the Coleman collection. He was a buyer and we became friends and we've shared some uh, musical journeys together occasionally. He brought his friend John up and John basically just hung out and um, sat in the back seat, <laughs> giving directions. Halfway through, we did stop for lunch at this burger joint with really kind of wonderful, voluptuous, juicy hamburgers. But this guy, John, I don't, John ordered an elk burger. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, um, at the end of this video, I'm going to uh, show you the records I got. First, there's going to be a little uh, tour here. Some of you are probably asking, why is this video in black and white? Why well, like sort of the artsy film noir mise-en-scene of the frame and the, you know, vintage sort of the French New Wave and the black and white cinema of the, of the 50s into the 60s? I love that stuff. So, you know, I know you guys want to see Mazzy in color. You want to see record stores and record covers in color, but you're not. This is the black and white film. I am the artiste and the director of this particular film, so all in black and white. So stand by for uh, the tour, little uh, showcase, and on the back end, I'll talk about the stores and show you the records that I picked up. I'm Craig, from the Vinyl Record Player. That's a very cool record. I'm John. Really good idea, right? From Tacoma. <laughs> John from Tacoma. Here is Music Room. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I gotta watch what I spend because I want to get a humming room. Hex Induction. Oh, it's That's a nice shirt. They have one side of it on the discogs. But the other side oh, is the same thing here. Oh, yeah, Paul McCartney's right. jacket. Yeah, I see. Did he sign that? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you come up with that? Yeah, you better duck. <laughs>
You're supposed to say sick, Doc. Stay six feet or more away. Six feet away. <laughs> what? Who's this? The whipped cream lady. Oh, she lives up here, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Oh, does she really? Yeah, she lives up north. You know, we got... Oh, yeah. oh the Whip. herb hopper. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Okay. Oh, oh she's in front of her. You know what's funny? This is perfect, because you guys are a bunch of rock oldies. It's, it's perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> is this it? Yep. I, I have a YouTube premium, so I never watch that. I'm not sure. There you go, five record stores in Seattle. And again, there are more than twice that in the city here. It's a good town for a record store. So I'm gonna go through these. I did not uh, organize them in terms of the stores, but I'll mention the stores I went to now. This is one I love, and this is Marion Faithful. I just love her. Uh, this is a DECA UK version of Come My Way, Marion Faithful. It's a mono copy. It's in pretty decent shape. So I'm very excited about this. I got this at Stumbletown Records. That's the one you saw that had, they sell chocolate and they sell wine and they have a little cafe. We all had espresso and cappuccinos <laughs> and um, great coffee. You can get like pastas and gift bags and get something, olive oils. It's kind of like this. the wife uh, of the woman who uh, co-owns it has that section, the little cafe section. And then uh, the husband, they have a couple of businesses there. They have a sandwich shop across the street, Stumbletown Records, but it's a cool little place. A lot of some Japanese imports, some used things. Uh, found, again, this used, uh, Mofis, just all kinds of things. Uh, they have uh, Pure Pleasure and uh, Speaker's Corner Records, which you don't see a lot in the stores here in Seattle. And I don't remember what I got where, but I got this uh, Francie Gall uh, record. This is her 1966 pop Yeah Yeah Girl masterpiece. Uh, Serge Gainsbourg uh, created it. I think she was the, pro probably the youngest, one of the first and one of the youngest of the Yeah Yeah Girls out of France, French uh, pop. And I don't have this collection. I'm still looking for a copy of Zooby Zooby Zoo. If you were a Madman fan, you know that... Uh, Don Draper's second wife sings that song in an episode, and there actually is a seven inch single that I own from that. A zooby, zooby, zoo. And a, a Francis Gall is the uh, first person that did it. Okay, International Submarine Band. This is a reissue on Sundays, all new Kevin Gray analog uh, cut. I have a copy of this, not the original anymore. I think this is a new cut, so I'm going to compare them and then I'll trade away the other one and pass it along. But this is uh, one of the early bands Graham Parsons was in after his bluegrass years. Probably the, this is the first band. This is produced by Lee Hazelwood and came out on Lee Hazelwood's 
uh, label. So it's a great country, rocky folk album. Love it. International Submarine Band. If you like Graham Parsons and you like the Flying Burrito Brothers, Craig came all the way from uh, San Diego, hung out with us, and uh, drove around and had lunch. He actually had an actual hamburger, not an elf burger. But he gave me this as a gift, um, I guess for driving around. So usually you tip your Uber driver, but I got this album he's, that he loves, Season for Love, Willie Hutch. And this is a beautiful copy. Uh, this is uh, a 2016 reissue of Willie Hutch, Season for Love. It looks like it's a soul record, right? A voice of Willie's has warmth to match like Nat King Cole. And I friggin' love Nat King Cole. I picked up uh, this Curtis Mayfield record. I don't see this very much. This is the latest, 1979, uh, distributed through RSO when they switch when his uh, custom label Curtain or Curtain. Is it rhyme or Crouton or Curtain or like drapes? Uh, anyway, anything Curtis Mayfield. I don't know if this is, I don't know this record, but it was fairly uh, reasonably priced and I picked it up and it was, it's in beautiful shape. This record I used to have, I know it well, but I like it, I don't have it. It's more fusion spiritual, of course, it's the two amazing guitar players of John McLaughlin and John McLaughlin and Carlos Santana. Very kind of uh, kumbaya-esque, spiritual fusion, um, crazy guitar stuff, right? Dividip Carlos and Mahavishnu, John McLaughlin. There you go, it's Columbia Records. That is 1973, and this, this is an, a UK pressing, so not country of origin, mind you. Now, I'm all in on Ian Sylvia, the great folk duo out of Canada, of course, Four Strong Winds is that great song that uh, Ian Tyson wrote. He just died in the last couple months, and I have a lot of their records. Uh, this is a Vanguard comp. They did a series of these greatest hits, double records of their folk series, like Joan Baez and the Weavers, and uh, just really great stuff. Ian Tyson also wrote the great song, Someday Soon, that uh, J Judy Collins had a huge, huge hit on, and I just love that version. So uh, this is a wonderful copy, really inexpensive. What's $6, two record set, perfect condition. And folk music is cheap, and I'd say, you know, it's great. If you like roots music, if you like alternative country and, um, you know, go for the real folk hits. Now, this is a record I used to have and I no longer have, and this is a fabulous record. It's a double album called Hillbilly Jazz. This was on, I think it's Flying Fish Records. Yeah, Flying Fish Records. And this has David Bromberg, Bastard Clements, DJ Fontana on drums, uh, Michael Melford guitar, Sam Prude guitar, Kenny Smith. This is an amazing record, amazing sounding, rootsy, acoustic, again, sort of like country western, uh, country jazz, western swing, and it's a beautiful, beautiful recording. And I haven't had this record in many years, and I used to play it all the time. We used to play this uh, record a lot in the 70s in our store, but a fabulous uh, rootsy sounding record. If you like artists like Tony Rice and David Bromberg and Norman Blake, and that sound. Uh, this is very rewarding and really wonderful. I have a copy of this. It's kind of an original, a Durham a US copy, uh, which is good, but it's a little noisy. I've had it. It's my original copy. And this is actually looks pretty good. And um, this is a UK OG copy, 10 years after Watt. Of course, I love Alvin Lee. And uh, this is this is a wonderful record. So a UK copy of that. And this was actually cheap. And again, this is another record I used to have. $10, two LPs, OG, perfect condition, UK copy, Traffic on the Road. This is after their period of, of um, Shoot Out the Fantasy Factory and Low Spark of High Heel Boys. Longated, kind of uh, folky, jammy rock and roll stuff. And um, that opens up with Glad from the John Barleycorn record. But, this is on the road, a great live album. It's a great sounding live album. I never had a uh, UK copy. Of course, Stevie Winwood and Jim Capaldi and Chris Wood. And I think it's Reap Bop Kwakuba on this one. I think he is. Yeah, he was on here. Did some cool percussion stuff. Ro oh, Roger Hawkins and Barry Beckett. 
That's right. So this is a this is kind of funky, soulful, jazzy rock, and uh, it's really well recorded. Highly recommend it. And ten bucks for two LPs. That was a Jive Time record. Jive Time Records, Daybreak Records. We went to. You saw Daybreak, uh, RJ's place, great used record store. Some new stuff, but mostly used. And a, just, that's a space with the roll-up door right across the hamburger place where John had an elk burger and the rest of us had a um, beef hamburger. And then we went to Golden Oldies. Golden Oldies is a fabulous store. Um, and they had those old, literally, those, I think those cardboard headers of each artist that are written that you see in the video, I think those were... Um, created, written like 1856. Those, are, those have been there that long. I picked up a couple things there. I got this, this is a three record LP. This is one of those radio documentaries that um, were sent to radio stations to play. And this is like a, a 1980, is it 89? October 1989, so the Paul McCartney story and has the PR sheet for this. They send this to radio stations and radio stations play it. Uh, so it would act like local content and special content. The Paul McCartney story, and it shows vinyl records. No digital step, I don't think. Probably is, 89, maybe. Talk Talk, never had this album. Everyone says I should have this album, so Talk Talk. You guys know it. And the big grail of the day for me, um, I'm all in on Prince, and this is one... Prince album that's really hard to get now. And this is actually a, um, looks like a BMG direct marketing. This is a record club edition, but it looks pristine. Looks like it's never been played. And this is a, I was gonna say physical graffiti, but you know that wouldn't be correct. This is a graffiti bridge. Isn't this basically the sort of sequel to Purple Rain somewhat? Um, I never saw this film, but I do have a CD of this and I love this music. And this is a double album on vinyl. Okay, so five record stores we went to with Harry, John, and Craig. And thanks for hanging out, guys. It's always fun to, to meet new people and to go record shopping and buddy around like that. Have lunch when, you know, you have a great burger. And then, of course, some guy orders an elk burger. Uh, but it was a great, fun time. We went to um, Hex Adduction. Is that right? Uh, that's, I think, isn't that na based on a, uh, a name of an album by The Fall? We went to Daybreak Records in the Fremont District. We went to Jive Time in the Fremont District. We went to Stumbletown Records in the Finney District. That's the one with um, the cafe and the chocolates and the pasta and the kind of cool olive oils. And then we went to Golden Oldies, which is a great store too, uh, with those old header cards, I believe, from... Uh, 1846 and those guys were great and uh so thank you for watching this had a great time got some great records i got the mccarty record and the prince records at uh, golden oldies so uh, they have some really cool stuff and right across the street from golden oldies is a dick's hamburger takeout place basically old-fashioned kind of uh, drive-in so you can get a great dick burger at dick's there's a there are six or seven around the Seattle uh, area, you can't get an elk burger there, but you can get a cool hamburger there. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you for watching. Now, before I close out, I'm gonna stick a, a song on here from the Dollar Bin. I bought a Dollar Bin record that I couldn't believe I found this record. And this is a shout out and a thank you to all uh, my German friends who are watching this right now. Uh, this is In Shrink, originally, Manufactured list price at $4.79, on sale for $3.33, and I got it for a dollar. In the shrink, Wayne Newton's Now. So, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Mazzy loves you, and Donkashen.
sweet time.